Good is it, morning. Is it going? It's going. It's it's devotion time. Oh, it's devotion time. So this is our our last devotion on our Matthew 25 journey to Pentecost because today's actually Pentecost. Really? Yeah, I not thought last week. Thought last week was. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did I tell? Oh, I think I said it last week. The reason I'd gotten all these pictures from Pentecost here at the church like five years ago, everybody in their red and. So I just thought when the picture showed up on Facebook that it was Pentecost. Yeah, it kind of burned into your brain that yeah, way. Yeah, it was like yeah. solidly there. So, yeah. um, but I'll never forget the Pentecost Sunday. It was, I think, my first Sunday here at the church. And for those of y'all who remember Mr. Keith, uh, Mr. Keith, I told everybody to wear their red for Pentecost. And Mr. Keith came in with his, with his red hat, he had on a white t-shirt, like the kind of t-shirts you'd wear underneath a button-down shirt. He had his red running shorts from the 70s. Yeah, like... They came to like They were here. short shorts. And then he had his white socks pulled up to here and his red shoes. Yeah, they, he was a candy striper for he, sure. <laughs> and um, when John went to pick him up, um, John's like, Keith, what are you wearing? He said, Pastor told me to wear red. <laughs> And it is one of my favorite memories of Mr. Keith. And he was so proud of his red and white. And he, he was I, totally I, I, in it. Honestly, I, I remember that as well. I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> it was awesome. And you so. make fun of me when I wear my shoes and white socks. I do make fun of you, but it looked really cute on Mr. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> when you're 90, that'll look cute on you too, honey. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, so... It's... It's kind of been this journey, and the journey has been about becoming a beloved community and kind of what that looks like. So today's devotion, um, it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and then 12 through 13. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So, and this is a story that I actually wrote um, from an experience I had many years ago. I share, I remember walking into her hospital room almost 20 years ago like it was yesterday. She sat in her bed mumbling incoherent thoughts. The nurse had prepared me that the woman had been speaking nonsense ever since she was admitted. They weren't even sure if they had her name correctly. As I started to walk in, the nurse said, good luck. I sat in the dark room and wondered what to do. I asked the woman if we could read scripture and pray and she nodded in agreement. I read the passage, like one of those things, you just open the Bible and you're like, come on Jesus, give me something to read. And so I read the passage from Mark about the evil spirit, spirits being in, sent into the pigs. I talked a little bit about that passage and what a scene it would have been, and then I prayed. I prayed for clarity of mind, heart, and body, for healing from the inside out, for God's power to overcome her and guide her to a place of peace. And when I finished praying, she said, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. And then we had a conversation for the next 20 minutes. She told me her name, about her family, where she lived, and some stories of her life. We laughed and talked, and then she started to say words, and then the mumbling began again. We were together, then we weren't. It was so incredibly hard. I left the room, shared the family information with the nurse, and have never forgotten the experience. Years later, I shared the story with the Pentecostal pastor I worked with in West Virginia. He shared that he believed God had given me the gift of interpretation for that conversation and reminded me of the importance of believing in the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. By God giving me the gift in the moment, I was able to help the woman in her time of need. Today, when I think back to that moment, I am in awe of the power of God. Understanding her was not something I could have done on my own. You know what the crazy part is? Seriously, I will never know if she continued to mumble and I was given the spirit to understand her words or 
if her words were made clear to me for me to understand. But I don't think it matters. The important piece for me is to continue to embrace is that God has given us all gifts. Gifts for the current situation, gifts for the moment, and gifts for the long haul. Learning how to use these gifts in the moment allows us to always be ready to be the extension of the one body, who is Christ Jesus. So you ready for the question? Whew. I don't think we need any questions. <laughs> All right, go. Okay, so have you ever been given a gift you didn't know you had in the moment? What was it and how did it impact you? Um, gosh, I mean, that's, that's, nothing comes immediately to mind, but, you know, for me, it's, um, again, I think when I, when I look back on some of these questions, I don't know that if I look at it in an individual event, I'd have to think long and hard, um, but I think about as, as walking life you always have these little events, right? As opposed to the big events. And, and for me, it's, it's sometimes it's, um, you know, for sometimes you, you go through these experiences and you experience something of which I can't give you anything exa specific example, but sometimes you walk away from that and you go, huh, where did that come from? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's part of the mystery, yeah. I think, of, and I think we all have those and if we personally I go well okay well that was a Jesus moment yeah right yeah well and when I read that and thinking about you um, it made me think about kind of that first moment where you as a teacher was affirmed and kind of when you had someone say you know what you're really natural at teaching these subjects or teaching these right. topics yeah, yeah. Um, and that wasn't a gift you knew you had. Correct. Right. You hadn't right. truly been aware of that. So, and that's some are apostles, some are teachers, some are like. So it goes kind of back to that mm -hmm. place with the, the spirit right. Right. for me. It's the different. It's the different body parts, right? Yeah. As the scripture talks about, some are some are this, some are that, and it heightens back to a Bible study that I was in with one of my first pastors. And the pa pastor happened to ask when he opens up all of his Bible studies, he you know he's always asking questions, and and to me. You know, as the body of Christ reflected in the human body, what part of the human body are you represented in? Your, is your kind of your spiritual gifts? Yeah. You know, as some people are have that have the, the gift of talking and listening and seeing and walking and doing those various things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So the second question is, what have you done today to be an extension of the body of Christ? I think it's. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned it, I think, I think you did in the prior service about being able to enable others to experience sacred space. You know, you have worked long and hard to get the technology all put together and for us to, you know, we decided to come down here today so, so it's great to be back in the garden and see this environment because it's just wonderful. Um, so, and that's by doing what we're doing and, and taking our Sunday mornings and setting up and whether that's in our neighborhood, these are things that, and, and sometimes we gotta put ourselves aside and go, you know what, we need to do this because there's others that are depending on us to do this. Yeah. Um, so that's just a small example of that. And now to, in, you know, to, in today's day and age, it's, it's the, this, sometimes it's just the little things that allow us to connect as the body of Christ to be able to come together electronically or you know next week we'll be able to do some of it social distancely physically Ooh, that's a mouthful prayerfully prayerfully yeah. yeah yeah what have you done today to be an extension of the body of Christ um, every morning we go to the barn um, to take care of star um, and so we were there at 7 15 this morning and I think a lot of the folks there can be a little rough and so one of the things that I've tried to do when I'm there is to just say good morning how are you like just to kind of share um, in conversation trying to slowly get to know people um, but 
trying to like break down some of those walls because I say horse people are hard <laughs> and and so it's it's just trying to be the body um, with folks that you don't know if they believe or not um, but you still share right, that right. love so I think I've really tried hard especially on those or early mornings to just be like, good morning, how are you? You doing okay? And just kind of have some of those conversations of, yeah, of love right, right, and care. Right. So that's one of the things I've been working on. And, and, and it has been great to, because now we're, now we have taken, you know, our house community, if I will, and we have our church community, and now we have a community of horse people. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and you're right, I mean, it's a, it's a whole different dynamic. I mean, <laughs> totally. it is, ooh, man. It, you talk about a horse being broken. You got some people that really need to be broken too, I think, because they're just. <laughs> oh, and the horses, if, if y'all think your dogs are your babies, y'all need to come out to the barn with us because these horses are very big babies. They're like thousand pound babies for so many of the folks out there. And one of, um, one of the owners, her horse's name is Faith. And she has her name with the scripture from Matthew 7. I think it's Matthew 7, 9 or 9, 7 or something like that. And it's your faith has made you well. And I think about that passage out there when I, when I think about this woman and her horse. And I think her horse is what has made her well. Um, and so just kind of that, that piece for people. But, I mean, their horses are, oh, oh yeah. wow. It's, it's, yeah, it's. <laughs> All right. So our See last. See you well then. See you, sign guy. Did you uh, see that Terry was on this morning? No. Okay. Everybody wave bye to Weldon. Yeah, that's Weldon over there. He's over there. He's interrupting. <laughs> okay. By, by the way, he's got a cute little hat on today. Looks like a little Frenchman. He does. He does. All right. So the last question, and this is kind of summer, summing up like the whole journey is how has your understanding of being a beloved community grown? I think, I mean, you, know, I, I, you can let me go for 20, 30 minutes on this one, but I think we've all, and you and I have had the community, the, 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 um, several discussions about how community is relational. And, and for us, it's, it's, you don't know how important something is until it's taken away. So true. Right? And so, in a way, has, and, and that can be positive and that can be negative. Sometimes we can look at that as woe is me because this was taken away from me, but at the same time, the positive side of that is, you know what, I need to learn to appreciate what I have and potentially what I have and how you gotta nurture that and you have to, it's like the garden, right? These plants can't live on their own, although they, they're doing very well back here. As <laughs> they I do can, very well. <laughs> it's a lot of like overgrowth, but, um, you know, you need to nurture it, you need to fertilize it, you need to take care of it because in isolation, you die, right? And so it's the importance of community because um, it, it's just what we can share from each other is, is so much more valuable than we are apart. Yeah. Yeah. And so what an opportune time now to sit back, think about all the things that we've experienced and say, okay, how do I make this positive? How, how do I take and understand now that I have been told to separate, but how do I, how do I come together with that? Because that's the importance of that and, and gathering. And I said, I could ramble on for a long time about this, but I'll stop yeah. now. Yeah. So for me, when I think about kind of the three elements of the beloved community journey as well, it was vital congregation, um, so congregational vitality, um, systemic poverty, and eradicating um, racism. So dismantling racism. So it was those three topics. And, and through the studies, all of those were kind of talked through. Um, I think for me, the beloved community piece for our congregation has been of how do we help in our community with food insecurity? How do we feed people physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally in our community? 
Um, and knowing that food insecurity is also connected to so many other aspects. Um, and I mentioned Bread uh, for the World, bread.org um, tells you nationally and globally how food insecurity impacts every system in our communities. Um, and so one of the big systems it impacts is mass incarceration. And so then that's connected to the dismantling racism piece too. And so all of them are connected. Um, I think in order to be a vital congregation, you have to be looking outside of yourselves. So you need to have a focus and a mission and a purpose for why God has called you together. Um, and that being beloved, I mean, it's that, that you're, you're my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Um, and I don't think God said that to Jesus because he looked pretty in water. I mean, he said that because you are my beloved because you are about to go out and do the work that I've called the people to do. Correct. Um, I haven't called you to just sit on your butts and do nothing. I've called you to be my people. Um, and so I think for me, just kind of going through the devotions and the scriptures and getting to this place on Pentecost, um, just says there's more work to do. Um, and there's deep, we need to look at some bigger and deeper pieces within what it means to feed people in our, from our community. Um, and what, what is that call for our congregation? Because as Emma will say, she's like, we're small, but we're mighty. Um, but we're still small. Um, and, and through this time of seeing also how we've grown uh, spiritually, but also numerically, we, uh -huh. it has been a really fascinating process um, for our community. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of when we gather back together and we can actually talk about it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what we do next Sunday is we talk through what it means to be a beloved yeah, community. Yeah, because I, I would imagine <clears throat> that there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, when, <clears throat> when you are a part, and you 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 form new habits. Yeah. You form new behaviors. You form new mental outlooks. You do have all these, you know, physiological things that are different. And now suddenly, so that almost becomes a new norm. And now when you're going to go, it takes effort to actually go back to where you were. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and so this is this is if the, you want to go back there. If you want to go back to correct, it's a choice. You have to know. You have to go. Okay. The, the, I got kind of stuck in this new norm. Now I need to go back to to the norm that is very beneficial to me, mm -hmm. um, and that is becoming coming together again and uh, with that single purpose and mission and, yeah. and spirit led and all of that. So, but that's you know that's it's easy. You know there have always been more in that back backwards right and just not do but it takes that effort and understanding to re-engage yeah. yeah. right. let us pray can you, will you hold my hand as sure. you pray loving God we give you thanks this day we give you thanks for this journey um, through Matthew 25 and the journey to discern more about what it means to become and be a beloved community a community in your eyes where we are with your people. So God, today on this Pentecost Sunday, remind us of how we are to be as the church, how your church, your people are called to be in the world. And I pray that the spirit continues to breathe new life into us each and every day. In your son's name I pray. All right, friends, take care. God bless. And the next study, I think we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, we're going to read some stories from a book called Does God Have a Big Toe? Lots to think about on that one. All right, love you. Take care.